Hey everybody, this is Jimmy from This Movie Sucks, the podcast where we watch bad movies so you don't have to. On this episode of Behind the Bee Movie, we take a look at the 1988 movie Night of the Demons. So make sure your party supplies include a seance mirror because we are summoning long forgotten facts about this demonic delight. Night of the Demons is a supernatural horror comedy written and produced by Joe Augustine. Augustine pursued painting and cartooning before attending Temple University, where he studied film theory and production. As a college freshman, he won a Focus Award in the Film Studies category for a paper analyzing the symbolism in Francis Ford Coppola's Apocalypse Now. The only undergrad among 11 winners, he was flown out to Los Angeles for the ceremonies and sequentially moved to Los Angeles to attend the AFI Conservatory for Advanced Film Studies as a producing fellow. At his graduation review, he was told by school director Tony Vellini that he had held the record for the number of student productions he'd worked on. The film was greenlit under Meridian Productions and given the budget of $1,200,000 under its original title, Halloween Party. But that title was changed to Night of the Demons, which was more in line with the supernatural theme of the movie. One proposed alternative title for the film that ultimately wasn't used was Demon Boogie. They attached director Kevin Tenney who had recently finished up with his horror thriller 1986's Witchboard. So he seemed to be a perfect fit for the project. Tenney would go on to direct other genre film, Pinocchio's Revenge, in 1996. What we did was, because we had a small budget, I sat down with Joe, and Joe was not just the writer, he was also the producer, so he did understand that you know things have to change for financial reasons we decided that rather than try to find a house that matched the floor plan of the script and then a house maybe we couldn't afford we were getting this great house for within our budget we went back he and I and we walked through the house and we found specific rooms and hallways and we said how about if this is where this scene takes place and this is where this scene takes place and then he went back and rewrote the script to fit the house The plot follows 10 teenagers that have a Halloween party in an abandoned funeral parlor called Hull House. The parlor was built on a piece of land rumored to be cursed. While starting the party, the teens gather around a big mirror to perform a seance. Big mistake. They awaken some evil force and find themselves trapped and taken over by demonic possession. One by one, their souls dragged to hell. The main protagonist of the film is your stereotypical good girl, Judy, played by Catherine Podwell. If she looks familiar, that's because she played Kathy Harper in the 1988 relaunch of Dallas. The film was shot in four weeks and had a stellar cast of no-name actors, including Hal Havens as Stooge who had a long career on TV, making appearances as big characters in ALF, Parks and Recreation, Monk, ER, How I Met Your Mother, Fear the Walking Dead, and Westworld. Hal Heavens refused to show his posterior in the mooning scene at the start of the film, and the line, eat a bowl of fuck, that Hal Heavens says was just an actual remark that John Belushi said while performing a comedy routine live on stage. Most notable addition to the cast was Lena Quigley, who was already a horror icon at the time, having appeared in Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Graduation Day. Lena Quigley had recently gained notoriety for her portrayal of Trash in Return of the Living Dead in 1985. She was asked to come in for an audition by filmmakers who were fans of that movie. She initially rejected the offer to audition, believing that she was too old to convincingly portray a teenager. Her agent insisted that she go in after a couple more requests. She eventually did the audition, and to her surprise, she won the role. Lena and special effects artist Steve Johnson met when she came in to get a mold of her fake breast done. 
They were later married. Lena Quigley also had to be trained on how to correctly engage in eye gouging. The main demonic antagonist was played by Amelia Kincaid, who had only appeared in some minor television roles, most notably Golden Girls and Knight Rider. When we first see her character Angela in the convenience store, she is wearing cross earrings. Later in the movie, after becoming possessed, her cross earrings are upside down, a popular sign of the devil. The opening scene where you know, right before my dance, in, in Demon's Point, where you know for the first time that something's a little bit wrong with me. Steve Johnson had put this, this gel on my fingers and he said, Okay, this is going to burn for six seconds before it burns through to your skin. So just put your hands in this huge vat of ice water after six seconds. So I had to time this perfectly so that when I turned around and said, I was just warming my hands over the fire and I'm counting five, six, ah! then the hands had to go into the ice water or my fingers would have burnt off. This was the 80s. This was the fun of movie making in the 80s. Amelia choreographed her own dance routine by the fireplace. She had her aunt, a professional choreographer, Rue McClayahan, pay a visit to the set to assist in choreographing the number. The film was released October 14th, 1988, and performed outrageously well in its limited release in Detroit. When it hit the New York City market by Thanksgiving and it earned $3.109 million, holding the screens until the end of the year. If the film had opened nationwide with the numbers it had earned in Detroit, it was projected to have earned $13 million domestically in its opening weekend. That would have ranked it amongst the top grossing horror films of the 80s decade. The reviews were varied on the film's release. The Cinematical wrote that, quote, while not particularly original, Teenie's film is definitely entertaining if you're just into the whole teens wandered into an isolated locale and die horrible death subgenre of horror, end quote. But in the following years, the film would grow to cult status. Horrornews.net called Night of the Demons one of the 80s greatest legacies in horror. Republic Pictures purchased the VHS home video rights for the film in May 1989. Anchor Bay Entertainment released it on DVD in 2004. Screen Factory, under license from its current right holder, MGM, released a Blu-ray DVD combo collector's pack edition February 4th, 2014. DVD Talk praised the film's 2004 DVD release, but stated that the director and producer commentary was seemingly stodgy. Bloody Disgusting praised the film's DVD release, calling it the perfect DVD for all fans of a lost era, the 80s horror film. W. Scott Poole of Pop Matters called it truly original and wrote that the film blends elements of the slasher films and zombie films. The film has had a slight cultural influences as it was the inspiration for the horror thrash metal band Hull House, fronted by actor Zach Martin under the name Zacky Gorehound. Overall, Night of the Demons is a classic representation of 80s horror cinema. Borrowing much from other supernatural horror movies such as The Evil Dead and Demons, Night of the Demons still manages to have its own particular aesthetic while sticking to the traditional horror motifs found in films of the era. So if you are in the mood for a supernatural spine tingler, then definitely check out Night of the Demons. <laughs>